kind of weird. The plaintiff hired her ex-fiance to do work on her condo. Surprise, she says he was unreliable and dishonest, which is why she calls him X. The deal may have fallen apart because he bought a motorcycle. Let's listen. You're celebrating yourself on Friday when because you're getting a motorcycle you bought yourself for your birthday right. with an advance from her. Then you're celebrating on Saturdays. Why should you be forced well, to work any longer advance. than 2 o'clock on Saturday? And then you're not going to work on Sunday because it's, it's your birthday. Birth right. Okay. Well, I'm pretty sure that condo rules don't allow contractors to work on Sundays anyway. Okay. Did, and then, so now you've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. But, and Thursday. And Thursday. But we all thought you were going to do it between Friday and the Thursday. Well, I never right. said Friday. And that didn't happen. Right? I never confirmed Friday. But you weren't, but the reason why, you, the only thing you said to her was if I have the other job, I won't work there Friday. But that's not what you were doing. You were waiting for the, the, receiving the motorcycle. Right. And you knowing him as well as you do, what are you, nuts? Giving him an advance so he can get a motorcycle? I think he's well, going to show up work? Advance. She I, didn't, I, I did, didn't actually work out that way. No, I, he asked for the advance. I said that he could have it and just take it off of the balance that was owed to him. But Saturday when I told him he couldn't finish the job because he wasn't showing up for work, I canceled the check. Okay, and now, she, and you cancel the job because he's telling your tenant, I don't know when I'm going to be done. And he's finished working at 2, he's not going to be there Sunday, and he has a nighttime job. Okay, so now you are her daughter? Yes. Come on up. And what did you hear? Um, when I was at the condo on that Saturday, he told the tenant that he, the work would not be done by Friday, possibly not even done by that weekend, and he wasn't sure when she would be able to move in. Okay, and do you have an affidavit from the prospective tenant? I do. May I have it? Yes. And did, what ended up happening when you heard about this, this discussion, which took place when, on the Saturday? Saturday mm -hmm. afternoon. Okay. Yeah. According to this affidavit, what the tenant said, prospective tenant, is, is that a friend of yours or something that was going to rent the place? Yes. Okay, did she end up renting the place? She did. Okay, and uh, what she says is, I told him who I was, and I was there to bring some of my things over. He said he could not bring anything over yet. I told him I was just putting them in the storage room on the patio. Nothing would be in his work, be in his way of his finishing the work, and I wouldn't bring anything else over till Friday. This was a date Stephanie and I set up as a move-in date. She assured me that Daryl knew the move-in date and promised all the painting would be finished and the hardwood floors would be completed. When asked when he thought he would be done, he replied he doesn't know when he would be finished. I told him I had already scheduled to take Friday off from work. And he said he didn't care what Stephanie told me. The job was not going to be done by the following weekend. And he doesn't know when he will complete it. Now, you have a, a counterclaim against her because you think that you should be able to get an additional $1,500 even though you didn't do the job. The balance of the contract. Right. And because you feel that she wrongfully can't Exactly. Because she, she canceled you and she shouldn't. Customers have within 72 hours of, of commencement of the job to cancel the job. The, the job was accepted on Tuesday. Okay. She but fired if, me. She actually she fired thinks, me on here's, Sunday. There's a thing in the law called anticipatory breach. And that means that she pulls out because she sees that you can't comply. But that's assumption. I, well, but here's the problem you have. I have her daughter testifying. It's what you said. Okay. And then I have her the tenant under oath in, a, in an affidavit saying it's what he said. Okay, I never he has told no her. clue that when he's going to finish. I never said that. Sounds bad for the birthday boy. Will the plaintiff get nearly five grand? Judge Millian rules next. So, does she have a right to hire someone else and get her money back? Definitely she does. Why? Because she would have some damage otherwise. Well, but she... she to defend her own rights. But he, you know, he still could have done the job and may not have been on time, and he had a deal with her. But still, I think she should get her money back. Okay, going to go inside the courtroom. Now, I have a letter, a notarized statement, from my friend Tommy, who is a painting contractor, okay. who I asked, if I need you, can you and... Can you and you uh, supply and you're, uh, not her. showing up. You don't show up Friday because you're waiting for a motorcycle. You <laughs> leave at two on Saturday because it's your birthday weekend, and you don't work on Sunday. Okay. How many people work full day Saturdays? <laughs> how many people work full day Saturdays? A lot of them. Right. right. But how many don't? So I'm kind of in the middle. So what is this? This is a letter from somebody saying, an affidavit from somebody saying right. Tommy's that a he had contract. a discussion with you on January 29th, which is the Thursday, saying that he could work with you if needed. He'd get paid $200 a day, and he'd bring a helper for 14 bucks an hour. So then how would you even be entitled to keep all this money when you would have been out that money by using the helpers, a percentage of the if money? If I needed him. If, if you needed Oh, right. because you feel like you don't even need it. At, at that point, Okay. No. Now, this amount that you're suing for, apparently you had some problem getting him served? I did. Okay. Um, BSO, Barrowed Sheriff's Office, went to go serve, and the rental office had said that his apartment was vacant. Okay, now that's not true, though. You were living there. So yeah. what, did Correct. you have a friend in the rental office who was trying to get you not no. served? 
Okay, because the process service says that that, in fact, is what happened. She had to hire an investigator to get you served. The investigator had to figure out what the heck was going on. Well, and they also the, told the investigator that and it was they told the, inve the investigator has an affidavit that, he's entered, that she's entered into evidence that says that the person told him that and that he had to stake <laughs> out watch you come in your motorcycle and that you were hiding behind the next building trying not to get served. He knocked on my roommate. He knocked on the door. My roommate answered. No, he didn't knock on the yes, door. Yes, he did. My roommate called well, why, me. Out of no. curiosity, why didn't he ever knock on the door? He did. My because roommate called me and said, there's some guy looking for you. Because and he's got a mustache and he's driving a great Toyota. Right, and then he says that he saw you hiding behind the other building. Oh. I didn't know who he was. You didn't yes, know who he did. was? No. You yes. just know some guys looking for you. Yeah, some guys looking for you. Apparently, you got a lot of people looking for you, right? No, no. Lady, he's charming, but come on. I know him, and just in the trial, I wouldn't hire him. Okay? I, I, I'd, like to, I'd like to sit down and, and, and joke with him, but, you know, and be friends. You know, if I dated him, I might be friends with him, just like you did. Right. But I don't know that I'd hire him. I think you know his number. Okie dokie. All right, listen, this whole process server problem, listen to me. Right. This whole process server problem is, is an issue here. Right. And it's an issue because... Um, you know, it turns out that he hadn't really moved and that he was living there. Correct. And I don't, you know, I'm not sure why the, um, you know, this person was lying for him un unless, you know, they are charmed by him too. Um, but, you know, you sort of have an issue with the, the company that's lying. Right. And you sort of need to take it up with them. Right. Because if he had gone to the room and knocked on the door like he eventually did, he'd have found him. All right. All right. As for the money that you paid him, um, f you paid him a total of 5000 what? 625 and your counterclaim against her for fifteen hundred dollars. Let me ask you a question, though. What yeah. about now? Uh, when when I do a contract, it's all inclusive. Now, considering that I was fired, what about compensation for the time that I spent searching for the material? Four hours running around pricing materials. Two hours measuring the condo for all the flooring. Did you actually do anything in the condo? Yes, I painted. What painted did you do? all the brushwork in the living area, which is the living room entrance dinette. Okay. He's entitled to get paid for that. I mean, I realize you had to pay somebody. Right. What did you have to pay somebody else? Um, I only paid labor because I ended up spending... What did you pay um, for the labor? I probably spent $1,800 for labor for the four days. Okay. Okay, and I also have the, the picking up and delivery of, of the materials. Mm -hmm. Two trips, 20 boxes per trip. Mm -hmm. and All right, he is entitled spent. to something for that. Stop talking and let me figure out what I think you're entitled to, given the rest of the situation. Okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to award you an additional $700 for the time that you spent working there. And I am going to order you to pay back the difference in what we're talking about, which is $3,447.50. You end up coming out okay because you ended up paying a lot less for labor than you were going to pay him. So I find in favor of the plaintiff in the amount of $3,447.50 on your counterclaim zero. Well, let's see if the defendant's still just as charming after he loses the case. Uh, what's your reaction to this outcome? I'm very upset with it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's because they're, you know, c consumers are protected against contractors, but what about the other way around? You know, job being canceled after it was started. You know, leaving me without work or income for five days. Mm -hmm. So it's amazing you can even make it here into the courtroom today. It's not, you know, it's not your birthday or yeah. any of those <laughs> national holidays. Nice of you to make the time to come yeah, in. Sure. All right. Sure. A trip okay. to New York. <laughs> Head right down that way, and let's see what the the winning party has to say about this. Come on in here. Um, let's see. Hiring your ex-fiance to do work on your condo. Good idea, bad idea? It's a good idea. He does good work. Mm -hmm. Just not this particular time. What is it about him you find so irresistible? His charm. His humor. Yeah? Mm-hmm. You're about to faint. I don't think I'm about to faint. <laughs> <laughs> no? no? You're all right? I'm all right. You need just to... Yeah, right? Okay. I'm okay. All right, Harvey? You know, what she did, you're allowed to do, but only if it is extremely clear that the other person cannot perform or is unwilling to perform the job on time. And that will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case on the way.